Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining me here this wonderful Saturday morning. Go ahead and like and share the post, if you will, and then grab your Bible, your phone, and turn with me to the 106th Psalm, Psalm 106. We'll be picking up in verse 14, and again, we're looking at a, a flip side here of uh, what we looked at in the 105th Psalm, Psalm 105, uh, was a psalm that reminded the Israelites in their uh, desperate time that God uh, had always been faithful to them, and so they could expect him uh, to be faithful again. Now, this psalm is reminding them uh, of how they have been unfaithful, uh, how they have failed God. Uh, and so certainly there's some um, points of, uh, of identification on both, uh, both sides for you and I. Uh, God has certainly been a faithful, good God, uh, but like the Israelites, there have been times uh, when we have been less than faithful, uh, where we have uh, disappointed him. And the psalmist is just going through their history uh, and pointing that out to them. And uh, what we're going to look at today uh, is in some ways one of the most amazing uh, stories in the Bible. Uh, and that is how in the book of Exodus uh, we read that when the Israelites got to the Red Sea uh, and the Egyptian army had began uh, pursuing them, uh, they got to the Red Sea, they had the Red Sea in front of them, the Egyptian army behind them, and so really nowhere for them to go. And you remember the story, uh, God told Moses to stretch out his uh, rod, and he did. The Red Sea opened up, and they uh, walked across on dry land. Uh, when they all got across and the Egyptian army pursued, uh, then the waters came closed and destroyed the Egyptian army. And you would think uh, that that would set the Israelites up now between uh, the observation of uh, the plagues that came on Egypt that uh, caused their uh, their release, and then this great uh, event at uh, the Red Sea, you would think that the Israelites would be set to be uh, the most faithful people uh, ever to, uh, to draw a breath. But instead we read, uh, it says they soon forgot uh, his works. How soon, you might ask? Well, uh, about three days, 72 hours, uh, is all it took for them uh, to turn their back and to forget uh, about this great deliverance of God, uh, began to complain uh, that uh, God had uh, brought them uh, out into the wilderness to die. Uh, said they uh, says they uh, but lasted exceed but uh, lusted exceedingly uh, in the wilderness and and tempted uh, God in the desert. Uh, what it was was they were complaining because uh, they hadn't been able uh, to find any water. And uh, even, uh, again, this quick after what God had done for them to get them there, uh, they have already forgotten uh, the great deliverance of God, uh, the power of God that had been demonstrated uh, on their behalf, and already uh, are... Uh, are beginning to question God and uh, challenge God and, and doubt his, uh, his plan as they continued uh, to walk through the wilderness. Uh, they mumbled, they complained. Uh, that um, Old Testament King James word that we see so often murmured uh, that uh, I think that that word just has a uh, a picture to it for me uh, of uh, of complaining and uh, they they murmured uh, against God um, saying they should have never left Egypt uh, that was how uh, angry upset disappointed they were uh, with God that they would have rather 
been back in Egypt uh, with their cruel taskmasters uh, making bricks uh, for the Egyptians, then they would have been uh, following God. Uh, and the interesting thing is uh, we see in the next verse, uh, he gave them their request, uh, but sent uh, leanness into their soul. Uh, and so he gave them what they were uh, complaining about. Uh, most of you are probably, uh, you have a little bit of, um, uh, I guess, a stubborn streak like me uh, that uh, had they said that they've been complaining about what I had done for them. I would have given them uh, a little, a uh, little more, uh, a little something to complain about. You, uh, I, I could have, I would have uh, made things probably a little harder for them instead of actually giving them uh, what they had asked for, uh, what he had did them, you know, what they had uh, been complaining about. And so uh, but we do see that he's going to uh, bring judgment on them because uh, of their uh, continual complaining. Uh, verse 16 says, They envied Moses uh, in, uh, in the camp, uh, and Aaron, uh, the saint of the Lord. Uh, the earth opened and swallowed up Dothan, uh, Dathan, and uh, covered the company uh, of Abram, and a fire was kindled in their company. Uh, the flame burned up the wicked, uh, and so we see that uh, again. God just continued. God uh, gave them what they wanted, uh, but because of that, uh, they um, they are punished uh, for their uh, for their complaining as they continued to uh, murmur, continued to cause trouble uh, in the camp. The Bible says that uh, the earth opened up uh, and swallowed them. Uh, and so quickly, uh, immediately, he, he judged this group that was uh, causing, uh, continuing to cause trouble uh, in, uh, in their camp. Uh, continuing to, to complain. Uh, then he sent a fire uh, that uh, Exodus tells us consumed uh, uh, 250 uh, more uh, of their people, again, for their uh, complaining. And uh, we continue to read again uh, in verse uh, 19. They made a calf uh, in Horeb and worshipped the molten image. Uh, thus they changed the glory uh, into the similitude of an ox uh, that eateth grass. And again, we read this phrase. They forgot God their Savior, which had done great things in Egypt, wondrous works in the land uh, of Ham and terrible things by the Red Sea. Therefore he said that he would destroy them. Uh, had not Moses his chosen stood before him in the breach uh, to turn him turn away his wrath lest he should destroy them. Uh, and so uh, God uh, was uh, fed up with their idolatry, uh, fed up with their complaining. Uh, they've made, it says here, a uh, an idol and began to worship it. Uh, and God intends to destroy uh, the people uh, for that uh, for that decision. But uh, Moses stood up. Uh, and pleaded with God uh, that he would spare uh, the people. And so we have, a, a, again, a very uh, sad uh, episode in the history uh, of the Israelites. God has, again, uh, fresh on the heels of uh, the plagues that God had sent to bring them out of Egypt, uh, right behind, just a few hours removed uh, from the division of the Red Sea, uh, that where they came across on dry land, the Egyptian army uh, is swallowed up uh, just within hours of that. 
we have uh, the Israelites complaining uh, about uh, their circumstance. Shortly after that, uh, we see them making a uh, uh, an idol and beginning to worship it. Uh, and that key phrase, uh, they forgot God, their Savior, which had done great things in Egypt, wonderful works in the land of Ham, and terrible things uh, by the river. Red Sea. Uh, what a sad story. Uh, let that not be our story today. Let that not be uh, our testimony, uh, what God would have to say of us today. Uh, let's not forget his great works. Let's not forget uh, the great things uh, he has done, uh, is doing uh, every day for uh, each one of us, how he blesses us, uh, provides for us, uh, protects us. Uh, let's not be like these folks and forget uh, that great work. So I want to challenge you today uh, to go out and be alert, be aware, uh, notice uh, all the great things that he does and give him credit, uh, praise him uh, for his wonderful work. All right, you have a great day. I hope that helps you, uh, encourages you this weekend, and we'll see you back here uh, Monday morning. Thank you.